Our second speaker today is Niels Arne Dreyer. Niels is a PhD student at the University of Münster and he's working on numerical algorithms in an HPC setting. And in today's talk, he will present his work on hardware-oriented block Krylov methods. Niels, the stage is yours. Yes. Okay. So hi, everybody. Um, first of all, I want to thank all the organizers of the, the seminar. I think it's a very good thing to, to have it during these times. And um, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to present my work here. Um, I want to start with an, a short explanation of the problem we are looking at. So uh, we have an operator A. You can think of, a, of an n cross n matrix, which is sparse and invertible. And we have multiple right-hand sides. So B1 to Bs are, um, um, are vectors. And um, yes, the S to the number of right-hand sides is much smaller than, um, than the dimension of the operator N. So you can think, for example, S is kind of 100 and N is in the order of, of millions or so. And for all those right-hand sides, we want to solve the linear system AX equals to B. And um, yeah, we can write that into a matrix equation by putting all the Bs into a column rise into a tall and skinny matrix, and then write it just as X, uh, AX equals to B. So this tall skinny matrices um, are also called block vectors um, in this talk. And um, yes, these problems appears in um, many applications like in inverse problems or multi-scale finite element methods or also in, in optimization. Okay, so when we look in the literature, we find several approaches to apply Krylov methods on, on this kind of system. So as a first um, approach is, is a so-called global method. And that means we um, consider this, um, all the system as, as, as one large linear system. So that is the n times s dimensional system then. Another approach is um, so-called parallel method. That means that we have s um, parallel running Krylov um, methods, and um, but they are executed simultaneously in, in kind of a lockstep, so all iterations are, are carried out simultaneously. And um, finally, there we have this um, block methods. They are, were, were introduced in 1980 by Diane O'Leary. Um, that also solves all systems simultaneously and make use of the larger Krylov space that is defined by the sum of the Krylov spaces for all the columns. Um, and, and that leads to an improved convergent then because um, we have a larger Krylov space. So um, my, my PhD thesis and my, my work um, builds up on the, the framework that was recently introduced by Frommer, Schild, and, and Lund. And um, that is a very nice framework because that puts all these methods that I, I mentioned on the previous slide in, into this one framework, and um, th that is based on a star subalgebra of the S cross S matrices and a, a block and a product that maps two block vectors into this subalgebra. And um, this block and a product is um, some kind of generalization of the scalar product. Yeah, and by choosing this star subalgebra, we can implement um, the previous mentioned method. Um, the central definition um, in this framework is, is the definition of the block Krylov space. And um, this is, is defined by, okay, we are, we are applying um, uh, powers of the operator A to some vectors R and multiply the um, this elements from the star subalgebra from the right and um, take the span of, of all these vectors. And this, this is the subspace of, uh, of the blocks, uh, block vector space. Yeah. Okay, now I, I told you that, that we can represent um, these methods into the framework. And um, we do that by, um, the, for, for the global method, we, we choose um, star subalgebra as a sc scalar multiples of the identity. So I illustrated here that here with, with these um, images. So all the, the diagonal ent entries um, are allowed to be non-zero, but are they are restricted to be the same. For the parallel method, um, we can, can implement that by choosing the, the set of diagonal matrices. So all the diagonal 
uh, entries are allowed to be non-zero then, but are also but not uh, are not restricted to be the same as in opposite to the global method, and the block trial of methods can be implemented by choosing just the whole S cos S um, matrix matrices here. Okay, now one could ask for whether we can find other star subalgebras um, to, to invent new methods, let's, let's say it like that. And um, that is, is the case. Um, so we can, can build new methods and um, the most interesting are those two methods. So they are constructed by um, subdividing a block vector into Q chunks of P columns. So um, we can write it like that. So X is X1 to XQ and every XI is the tall skinny matrix again um, with S columns, uh, with, sorry, with P columns. And for the block global method then we write again this global system which is now a linear system with p right hand sides and on this system we apply the block method and this leads to a block algebra uh, to a star subalgebra um, that has this block diagonal matrices be be occupied and uh, but they are restrict all block diagonal um, diagonal blocks are restricted to be the same and um, for the block parallel method this is um, quite similar, but we consider um, all the systems separately and execute, it, uh, execute them in this parallel fashion. And this leads to a block, uh, to this star subalgebra that has the block diagonals be, um, be occupied, and, but um, they are allowed to be, to be different. Okay, now, um, we have a lot of methods and a parameter P. And um, the question is how can we quantify or how can we choose the method um, or which method is, is the fastest is, is actually the question. And there are two aspects for that. On the one hand, um, we have the convergence speed. So how many iterations do we need to, to achieve convergence? And on the other side, we have this um, computational cost of, of one iteration. So how long does one iteration need on a computer. And to quantify the convergence, we have um, have a lemma here. So we can embed the, the star subalgebras into each other. Um, in that lemma, P1 and P2 are numbers where P1 is the divider of P2 and P2 is the divider of S. And um, then we can, can divide the parallel um, subalgebras into each other. So the parallel um, subalgebra can be embedded into every other block algebra, block parallel algebra. And um, the same is true for, um, for the block global subalgebras. Sorry. Sorry for that. Um, so, um, yeah, we can can um, we have that same embedding for the global um, subalgebras, and what we can also say is that we can embed the global algebras in the parallel algebras. And um, so, what does that mean? That means that um, that we can look at the definition of the Krylov um, subspace. And if we do so, we see that this properties um, inherits for the Krylov spaces. So we can embed the corresponding Krylov spaces into each other. And for a method that, um, that minimizes some property, um, for example, the CG method minimizes the energy error, then we know that, um, that the method um, that has the largest Krylov space con converges faster than, than a method with a smaller Krylov space network. Okay, now um, for the CG method, we can quantify that a little bit better because we have this um, theorem for the CG method that states that, um, that the energy error can be estimated by, um, by this term here. So we have the convergence rate that um, depends on the condition number of the operator and the condition number is, is the largest eigenvalue divided by the smallest eigenvalue. Um, 
And for the, for the block method, we have a similar result that was already presented by Diano Larry in 1918. Um, that states that we have oh, that is a similar estimation, but now we have the condition number and not, not the classical condition number, but the condition number that is um, the S condition number, let's say it like that, that is the largest eigenvalue divided by the S smallest eigenvalue. So these theorems um, cover the, the elementary cases, so the, the global and the parallel case and, and the block case. And for the, the hybrid cases, um, we can use these theorems to, um, to, um, to obtain um, convergence rates. So for the P block um, global method, um, I've told you that, that we apply the block method onto this, um, onto this global system here where we have P right-hand sides. So when we apply here the, the block method, we can apply the latter theorem from the previous slide. And um, that means that the convergence rate here has um, the condition number in it, but now with this operator, and this operator has the same um, eigenvalues as operator A, but with Q times the multiplicity. And that means that um, the convergence rate that we got here um, is this um, kappa P tilde, and T P tilde is P divided by Q rounded down. So, and for the block parallel method, um, we have A, um, we, we consider the systems here and um, apply the block methods um, simultaneously, but that yeah that doesn't affect the convergence rate whether we apply it simultaneously or not. So we have got the same um, convergence rate as with the block method, but we are only have p right hand side, so we have kappa p here. And the first thing that we see here is that the convergence rate of the, the P block parallel method is at least as good as, um, as the convergence rate of the P block global method um, for, for the same P. Okay, now um, I also did an experiment um, and on that. I don't want to go, to go into detail here, um, but what we can see here really good is um, that um, the block global method for P equals to 64 has the same convergence speed as a block parallel method for P equals to 16. And I used 256 uh, right hand sides here. And uh, so that result fits um, exactly the theoretical um, result that we have seen on the last slide. <clears throat> um, now to, to the performance estimation for, for one iteration of these methods. Um, we have basically three kernels that made up the most um, computational expenses. So we have the operator application that is applying the operator A to a black vector X and the output is Y. And the, inner, the evaluation of the inner block product. So um, X and Y maps to, to an alpha where alpha is in, in this subalgebra. And we have the generalized block vector update um, which updates in vector X um, by adding up y times a, uh, y times alpha. And um, you can see here, here the operator application. This, the runtime of this kernel does not depend on the star subalgebra, um, where, the, the, um, where these later both kernels do depend on this algebra, so on the method we chose. And um, the performance model we want to take into account is the so called roof line model. And um, this states that the runtime of a kernel is the maximum of the time to make the computation and the time to transfer the data from the main memory to the CPU and vice versa. Um, so, so the time for computation can be computed by the number of floating point operations that must be carried out to compute the kernel divided by the peak flop rate. And the time for the memory transfer can be divided, uh, can be computed by um, the amount of data that needs to be um, transferred divided by the bandwidth. So we have two properties of the, the kernel that are the, the flop number and the amount of data and two hardware properties that is the peak flop rate and the memory bandwidth. Now we can compute that for, for the block operator um, application. So um, when we have a matrix A that has Z non-zeros in it, then we have to carry out two times S times Z 
um, floating point operations. And the data we need to transfer is Z, that is a, the data of A, plus the data of the two block vectors, that is 2S times N. And um, I made an, an experiment, uh, experiment for that, um, where I used an, a matrix from a 3D Q1 finite element discretization. So we have 27 non-zeros per row on our um, Intel Skylake uh, compute node in our institute. And um, you can see here that um, I, I've plotted here the time per right-hand side on the y-axis, and on the x-axis is the number of right-hand sides. And um, you can see here, if we use more right-hand sides, then we get getting more efficient. So the time per right-hand side um, is, is getting down. And um, what you also can see is that the time is um, is all is all um, is always dominated dominated by um, the time for the memory transfer. Okay, for the other kernels, that is um, the in a block um, product evaluation, we have, um, yeah, we can, I always look at these images to, to compute that. Um, so we have basically two, uh, two, that is because we need to multiply the, the elements from these vectors and add up in, add it up into to the result. So we have this two, we have n rows in every vector and p squared times q are basically the non-zeros in the output. And the data we need to transfer is two times n s. That's the data of the block vectors. So we assume that um, the result stays in, in the fast memory. Um, for the generalized block vector update, this is quite similar. Um, so the, the only difference in, in this data is that we have um, three ns in, in the data that needs to be transferred. The reason for that is that the output vector needs to be right back to the memory. Okay, now I also did an experiment on that. So what, what gives that? Um, I used s equals to 256 right-hand sides. And um, when we look at the result, the, on the y-axis, again, is the time per right-hand side, which is basically the time now because s is fixed. And on the x-axis, um, we have the parameter p. And for the block parallel and for the block global method, we see that for smaller p, the time is more or less constant. And from some point that it increases. And the, the same is, the, um, is for, the, for the generalized block vector update. Um, so we have the same behavior here. Now, um, what does that mean? So first of all, we see that the block parallel and block global method have the same cost. And we already have seen that the block parallel myth method converges better. So what we can say is that we, the block parallel method is always preferable um, over the block global method. And another thing we could see is that, um, that the time here at the beginning is constant. And we have seen that for larger P, the convergence is better. So there's no reason to, to use this um, lower piece. So um, we, we can say that we always want to use this P where it starts to increase because that is the best P um, where we get the best convergence where while the, um, the cost for the computations is, uh, is equal to the previous piece. So that's it. Um, I conclude here by, um, by writing down the, the the things I've just mentioned. So the block parallel method is preferable over the block global method because we have better conver conversions while the same costs and better conversions of the block methods came for free up to this certain P where it starts to inc increasing um, the costs. Um, as an outlook, I, I want to extend um, this um, computations for, for eigensystems. So um, can we say made similar statements for eigensystems? And um, I want to provide these methods for a larger community because they are very rarely implemented yet. I'm working on a merge request for the Dune software framework currently. Um, and, and finally, I'm always looking for new applications. So if you have an application in mind, I would be very happy to come in touch with you. Um, yeah, so that's from my side. I'm looking forward for your questions. Thank you, Niels, for the very nice talk. Um, do we have questions in the Zoom Q&A, Catherine? Yes, we have a couple questions. So the first is from Hussam. Uh, shouldn't you consider the sum of flops time and the data movement time as both may not overlap? 
I think you considered max instead of sum. Yes, right. That's that's an assumption that we made, but but that's true for for modern for modern hardware, actually. We, so, which is true. It should be the max or the sum. Um, no, to use the max here. Yeah. So the computation and memory transfer um, can be done in parallel on, on modern hardware. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then Cleve Muller has a question. Uh, I love the names B dot and Bax P. Are they original? Um, no, that that are my creation um, in my, my thesis because I mean that's block operator application blot dot app, uh, so, so block dot dot doc for the scalar product and block XP. Um, so I, I introduced that. I haven't found that yet uh, or any similar names for that in in the literature yet. I think that's it for Zoom. Okay, Davide, do we have something on YouTube? No, no questions. Okay, then thanks, uh, Niels.